Let's turn our attention now to the fireside chat coming up. According to Gartner, the metaverse won't be mature until at least 2030. There's potential to change how individuals and organizations interact with one another and the world around them is so enormous that technology product and service providers are ready need a strategy. So the question is, how is the metaverse shifting our technical ecosystem and life cycle? With us to take a deep dive into this question are Neil Trevet, Deb Prince, and back to help moderate this interesting chat is Kavya Perlman. Just a little bit of background for you. Neil is Vice President of Developer Ecosystems at NVIDIA, where he helps enable applications to take advantage of advanced GPU and silicon acceleration. Neil is also the elected president of the Kronos Group, where he initiated the OpenGL ES standard, now used by billions worldwide every day, helping catalyze the WebGL project to bring interactive 3D graphics to the web, fostered the creation of the GITF standard for 3D assets. He chairs the OpenCL working group, defining the open standard for heterogeneous parallel computation, and helped establish and launch the new generation Vulkan API. Deb is also here joining us. And Deb started her career in Standard with UL in 1995. She worked in standards operations and then in global standards, where she was involved in implementing STP standards development process. Currently, she is the program manager and chair of UL's autonomous seat of standards, including automotive, heavy trucks, unmanned aerial systems, LiDAR, and robotics as well as responsible for cybersecurity, circular economy, and augmented reality, virtual reality. It's a lot on our plate these days. And welcome back again, our CEO of XRSI, Kavya Perlman, also known as the Cyber Guardian, and the ambitious human who's behind Metaverse Safety Week. She doesn't sleep, she doesn't eat, but she's still going like the Energizer Bunny. Kavya is constantly exploring new technologies to solve current cybersecurity challenges, and advises several governments and big tech corporations on global technology policy making and program development. She's won many awards, in fact, too many for us to recount all this evening, but I do wanna point out several that caught my eye. Uh, one is the top 20 cybersecurity influencers for 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2022 by ISEC Global. See, she's very consistent if nothing else. Also, she received the Top 50 Award for Cybersecurity Influencers for year 2022 by Ignatica. She's been recognized as Top 21 Women in Cybersecurity You Need to Know for the year 2022 by Making Space Initiative. She was named a Trailblazer in XR for 2021 by XR Women Global, Cybersecurity Woman of the Year 2020 by Cybersecurity Excellence Award Series, 40 Under 40 Top Business Executives 2019 by San Francisco Business Times, and I could keep going. If you can't tell, I'm just getting warmed up, but we're gonna stop short now because we actually wanna dive into this fireside chat. So Neil, Deb, and Kavya, over to you, take it away. Thank you, Christina. And uh, believe it or not, I sleep a lot. <laughs> That's like the key to doing all this. I don't compromise with my sleep too much. And so anyway, Let's get into today's topic, which is uh, how is the metaverse shifting our technical ecosystem and life cycle? Um, one of the things and keywords that I think we can all kind of see it's highlighted is the standards, because we have two prominent standard uh, focused organizations. Uh, one of them recently founded Metaverse Standard Forum. And so welcome, Neil, for coming together here and contributing to Metaverse Safety Week. And then we have with us Deb Prince uh, from UL, and that's like a standard organization for a long, long, long time. I can almost say like the old guard kind of helping us navigate new, ter new terrain. So with that, uh, you know, without wasting further time, I just uh, want to go over to you, Deb. Uh, what, what is UL? Uh, currently working on and playing a role in safeguarding the metaverse. 
Thank you. Um, first, a long, long time. Let me put context in that. We developed and published the very first standard in 1903. It was 10 clad fire doors. It is still used today to help propagate fi fire from um, spreading through buildings. So what are we doing in, in this kind of forum and in this activity that's relevant um, for our participants is we have a, a standard that's under development, UL 8400. It's for virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. And that's really hitting the electrical and the, um, you know, the whole function of the headsets or the optical um, glasses and, and that. So it's taking the electrical concerns into effect and um, a whole lot of other varieties. But I'll go deeper into that, I think, later. I think we're just giving a little overview of that's our uh, plan, right? Absolutely. Thank you, Deb. Thanks for that quick overview. And then so over to you, Neil. What is the Metaverse Standard Forum uh, doing? Um, and what is the role that you're playing in the in the Metaverse ecosystem? And, you know, I can also add, what's the scope of things that you're trying to address here? Even though I'm quite close to Metaverse Standard Forum, I want this question for the benefit of everyone else who may not be familiar or maybe kind of new to Metaverse Standard Forum. Sure. Well, firstly, thank you, Kavya, for involving me here. It's been a great day uh, being here um, most of the time. It's been awesome. Um, so UL is um, very uh, old as well established metaverse standards forum is just a baby we're just a few months old and uh it's uh, a very simple idea uh it's an accessible forum that uh, any organization can join and, and it's for cooperation over building the standards that we need open standards for the metaverse um the genesis was um with uh, working at chronos lots of people started coming to us saying uh, Kronos does metaverse standards, but there's lots of other organizations. It's a very confusing landscape, and there's nowhere to go find all of the standards organizations in one place and have a good uh, collaborative dialogue with the industry. So uh, we've set up the forum. Uh, we launched in June with uh, about 37 companies. And as of uh, yesterday, we're, uh, we've broken the 2100 company area. So there's a lot of interest uh, from the industry in standards for the members. Amazing. And uh, Deb, so, you know, after that overview, um, could you dive us deeper into the scope, the breadth of things that you are potentially uh, addressing, and then who all could potentially benefit from these upcoming standards that you talked about? Yes, thank you. Um, so really, like I said, looking at the electrical and the electronic function, first and foremost, um, and then building upon that, it's um, a risk assessment kind and of thing. And Deb, just quickly, your audio may be not amplified, just to make sure. OK, is it better? That's so much better. Thank you. OK. So it, um, it's looking at a risk assessment approach here. So things like if it's a see-through headset or function, how do you assess that? Um, assess the visual functions there. Flicker, how do you address? Flicker? How do you consistently address issues uh, with skin compatibility? So anything that really touches your skin, period of time, there needs to be that that too needs to be evaluated. In addition, um, exposure of the eyes to thermal energy. So there's a, there's a test that they use the headset on a dummy head, and they do an ocular surface temperature test to make sure that it doesn't exceed and cause burns to the to the user's eyes. There's biomechanical robustness. So there's um, what, what that means is basically you're doing a test to make sure the weight and the of the headset, mostly the head mounted on this one, it's not causing any damage to your cervical spine, upper cervical spine. So there's um, 
consistent testing to evaluate that. There's biomechanical testing. So that's, um, oh wait, that's what I just said, sorry. Mechanical robustness. So this is worrying about your ocular injuries. So from like shattered glass or sharp edges, and if you drop it and use it again or take a fall. And three tests under that, the static test, um, there's a ball test where you actually um, hit the lenses with, with a prescribed ball at a prescribed angle of dropping it and make sure it doesn't shatter. And it can shatter, it just can't shatter where it's to a point it can damage an eye. And then there is a drop test where it's a um, um, system, the device on testing actually goes on a dummy head and it's dropped from 0.8 meters. And, and you have to look again for what, what kind of, um, you know, it's really care that it cracks on the outside or the straps break, but what you're looking for is identifying harm for your use. Um, and then there's spatial perception. And how do you handle vulnerable populations? How do you set the age of your product? Things like that. So everything within our standard has been addressing, we're looking at and all the science behind it has been um, for users 12 and up. So it's really not intended um, for users younger than that. And we're not saying that the products aren't safe for that. We just didn't have the science and the um, data backing that. So, so truly, you know, Kevin, I said, what's your audience? Who's it for? It's really, it helps the manufacturers and the whole industry put out products that aren't causing harm and doesn't harm the industry, right? So you have that. And then you have safety of the users. We have, um, you know, that that's your bottom line. You want the users, the general public, to trust and be safe with the products at hand. Absolutely. And as I'm hearing you, it kind of like reminds me of uh, some of the earlier panels with the United States Consumer Protection uh, Agency, USCP. Uh, they have had some similar and common concerns. So it's really great that, you know, you're sort of helping stay ahead of things. And um, I wonder um, yeah. who all then are the contributors uh, to this standard? Well, you teed that up wonderfully and didn't even know it. So um, Consumer <laughs> Product Safety Commission, the U.S. Computer Science, Consumer Product Safety Commission is on my panel. So my panels are my, my technical um, panels who or their consensus bodies, they are from a variety of participants. So that we have the manufacturers that sit at the table and this is all public, um, the rosters are public knowledge. So we have um, all the big players, Google's there, PlayStation, Sony's there, um, Meta's there, and uh, Apple sitting at the table. We have, like I said, Consumer Product Safety Commission. Um, as participants, not on the voting panel, but participating, I have FDA that's looking into this. I have um, consumer watchdogs sitting at the table. And it is a really well-rounded group of individuals that are making this. We also have um, medical doctors because they're using it in physical therapy. They're using it in training at med school. So we really have the gamut as well as um, um our enterprise company, which would be UL Solutions, that does um, testing and conformity, they they also have one vote there. So yeah, it's 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 a big open process. Anyone can participate. Anyone can follow along. Anyone can make comments to it. It is very open. And I'll just put a plug in. Um, if you're interested and want to know what's going on, participate or anything, you know, reach out to me. Absolutely. And I can actually second that, uh, despite, uh, you know, not the official uh, formal collaboration, I've many, many times spoken with Deb, exchange notes and exchange science and really encouraging and the, the openness, despite uh, some of the aspects of UL do remain private. But when it comes to standards, it's a very wide open and, you know, embracing everyone into those uh, building aspects. 
And likewise, Neil, um, who all are there at the Metaverse Standard Forum? And in fact, I was quite encouraged to, to see yesterday as I joined uh, the call uh, that you've got some fancy tools there to do some analysis and really share that insights. Maybe you have greater insight for us, like who all are coming together in these projects, what are kind of working groups that are being set up, and any actionable projects that you think we should know about from um, you know, collective uh, efforts perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So um, with, with, with this number of participants, uh, it's great. We get a good diversity uh, from academia and industry and the standards community. So um, yes, we've just done some analysis on our membership. So uh, about 50% of the membership are commercial companies, but we have uh, uh, about 100 universities, including you know, Stanford, Yale, and Harvard. Um, we have 50 standards organizations, uh, which is a good start. We obviously want, would love, love more. Um, um, uh, and UL will be welcome to join. XRSI is already a member. And, and, and actually, actually raises an interesting point because people get a little confused. The, the Metaverse Standards Forum, you know, despite the name, it's not another standards organization. We have a whole bunch of excellent standards organizations you know, like XRSI doing great work. The point of the forum is not to compete with them. It's to be a resource for the standardization uh, organizations that are already out there. Uh, there are technical organizations like uh, Kronos, which is uh, the organization I'm involved with, W3C, Open Geospatial Consortium, IEEE, um, all are welcome, uh, along with industry and academia. Uh, we have everyone from General Motors, Google, Microsoft, Meta, uh, etc., all the way down to you know, single-person startup companies, and uh, all are welcome. Um, and the, really the point of the forum is that um, if we do our job right, uh, we can add value to the industry uh, by providing uh, broader input and wider networking for all of these organizations than they would typically normally have access to. I've certainly met a whole bunch of amazing companies and people that I would never have met uh, otherwise, and I'm, I, I see other people making connections too. And uh, we have a very engaged uh, uh, audience for the work products and the projects that we're undertaking. The, you know, with so many, yes, go ahead. No, go ahead, Neil, please. No, no, you, you first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just, uh, as you're continuing to talk, I, I was just uh, mesmerized by the breadth of uh, people, the diversity that Metaverse Standard Forum is attracting. Uh, so please continue, actually, I want to hear you. Yeah, uh, but, but that is, yeah, that, that's kind of the, the, the point, right? It's, it's helping people that wouldn't normally be able to find each other or connect to be able to, um, um, to, to connect and cooperate. But the, the challenge, of course, having so many members is it could descend into chaos. So what we have done to organize is we polled the membership as to what are the key interoperability opportunities or issues they would want to uh, help address. And we immediately got 200, a list of 250 uh, topics. And it's very interesting, actually, for this community. N number one on the list was 3D asset interoperability, you know, being able to take your avatar or your cool uh, Gucci jacket you know, between worlds. You know, perhaps that's not surprising. That came up at the top of the list. Number two was um, uh, privacy, security, uh, and, and ethics. Uh, which of course is super relevant to to this community and i i was so happy <laughs> to see that because it kind of shows showed to me that uh, i think the industry is primed uh, as some of the panelists were saying earlier today to having learned from web 2 you know all the wonderful things but some of the downsides too of of web 2 uh, to really try to bake security and privacy uh, in integrity and diversity into into the metaverse. Um, the fact that it came up number two out of you know, 250 topics, most of the topics were kind of engineering problems, but this one really bubbled to the top. And so we have uh, a working group that's just been uh, uh, approved to start work that actually Cavia is one of the chairs for, uh, that's going to be uh, uh, addressing privacy, cybersecurity, and identity uh, on, on the metaverse. And again, you know, we hope the forum is a great tool, 
know, for Caviar and the others uh, involved, you know, to accelerate your work that you're doing. Absolutely, Neil. Just uh, my personal experience coming to the forum has been really, you know, encouraging. And um, likewise, you know, this is a clear demonstration to our topic itself is uh, metaverse is shifting us, you know, the technical ecosystem. It's it's changing the way we've, you know, traditionally operated. Traditionally, companies have innovated in the silos, with patents kind of holding up, you know, that's happened. But Metaverse Trainer Forum is a remarkable example of how we are seeing everybody sort of collaborating and uh, creating a sense of, you know, Neil, you were talking about interoperability. Do you think that's also helping with the open safe um, in metaverse, creation of open safe metaverse with respect to we talk about just not just being able to take your Gucci jacket, but what about companies sort of uh, interoperating and in infrastructures as such? Uh, yeah, I think the uh, if we are going to uh, bake security and safety into the metaverse at the foundational level, it really does have to be based on open interoperability standards. There's no other way. Uh, where we can get you know, something so fund fundamental uh, to be accessible to everyone who is both building and using uh, uh, the metaverse. Uh, it, it's been an interesting kind of personal journey, actually, because you know, I, I come from a, the engineering perspective. You know, that's my, my, my background. So when we first started the forum, you know, um, most of the um, uh, members and uh, uh, activities were kind of on the engineering, technical APIs, you know, software driving uh, hardware. But very quickly, uh, as we were just discussing, these broader topics of policy and ethics started bubbling to the top. And I, I think I'm probably not alone. Uh, uh, and that, that I think there are a lot of folks building the metaverse that are coming from the engineering perspective, where they haven't had much exposure to this wonderful community here. Now, that I've become so impressed by this community, you know, the, the passion and commitment and the insights on what we can do to actually build a, a safer uh, environment. Um, it's been a learning experience uh, for me. And coming from the engineering perspective, I, I still find myself, I mean, I've been here all day listening to all these fantastic talks. And I still think, okay, what do they want me to do <laughs> as an engineer? You no, know, what, what's the what's the widget I have to build or the software I have to tweak? And, I, and of course, part of my learning experience is it's not that trivial. It's a much broader, um, less tangible problem than just solving an engineering uh, problem. But hopefully we will find what the engineering community can do. And you know, uh, if, even if it's not building the right widget, I think um, building out social norms and social expectations that the engineering community has to be aware of the importance of privacy and integrity on uh, on the metaverse uh, and hopefully the forum can play, play some role uh, in that everyone needs Absolutely. it because you know, not just for its own sake but if 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 the users on the metaverse begin to lose trust you now the metaverse will fail and that's not good obviously for anyone Absolutely, Neil. And I think um, with the help of tools like XRSI Privacy and Safety Framework and other frameworks that would come out, we might be able to get granular guidance for engineers. On that note, Deb, as Neil was mentioning, personally, it's been quite um, insightful, quite a uh, uh, learning experience. How has it been for you? And I do want to caution, we have about three minutes, but I definitely wanted to ask you, how has it been for you as a person seeing this landscape evolve and emerge? Oh, um, you know, I, I'd like to echo Neil, when you look at this, you know, I'm too an engineer, but my, my first thought is, you know, jumping to solutions. How, how can we, um, you know, you're, you're thinking build the widget. I'm thinking about how can we standardize something, right? How, whether it's, and, and again, that's why we, you know, our conversations, caveat your and eyes, has been so um, productive is the fact that we're both looking at, you know, standardization, whether it's privacy, whether it's the headsets like we're doing, how 
how you can cause no harm and see all the different um, topics that you've had this week and the different, uh, like all the discussions today. It all is just energizing and exciting and um, quite different than, honestly, quite different than what I was expecting too. So I, I think that's a great thing. Thank you, Deb. And so I know that we don't have time for questions, but so instead, why don't we go to the source and let people know how to get involved? So Deb, starting with you, how can people get involved with UL and maybe even approach you if they have specific questions, uh, your, your contact, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you can get involved. You can look at our website, ulse.org, and there's um, connections on how to get involved, or you can reach out to me personally. Um, it's Deborah, D E B O R H, Prince at ul.org. Um, so reach out to me anytime. You can join a committee, you can just kind of follow along. You could learn more about standards development and, and other agencies. I've got a lot of contacts in the field too that I'm more than happy to introduce you to. Absolutely, and actually that USCP contact, that came through you, <laughs> if I recall yeah. now, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, so Neil, how about Metaverse Standard Forum? How can people get involved? So just Google Metaverse Standards Forum if you find yourself on a page that has a little heart logo for the Metaverse, which is very cunning. It's an M and a V over each other. You're in the right place. And uh, it's free to join. Any organization can join. It's a simple click-through agreement. We would love to have you uh, engaged. Wow. So wait a second. I just realized what that is. <laughs> I never noticed. Thank you. <laughs> That's very cute. So thank you, both of you. We are on time. And um, instead of taking questions, definitely redirecting you all to Metaverse Standard Forum and UL. And certainly, you're welcome to reach out to XRSI at any point. We are all in this together. And that's exactly how Metaverse is shifting our technical ecosystem and life cycle, bringing all these players, standardizing organizations, big tech corporations all together to solve these complex challenges and stay ahead of some of these safety considerations. So thank you everyone. And we will take a few minutes break. Is that right, Christina? Yes, uh, thank you, Neil, Deb and Kavya for that rundown on the Metaverse Standards Landscape. Um, before we return with a closing keynote address, let's take the 10 minute break, uh, stretch your legs, get some water, a little bit of coffee and then meet us back here. Uh, where we will head into our closing keynote, which is going to be super exciting. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> 